Welcome everybody back to the Sloppy Lab. Uh, we are here today at a very special time, a CEST friendly time. Uh, and I have a very special first time uh, lab worker in the uh, lab with me, as it were. Uh, so welcome to Crusader. Welcome, welcome. Hello. <laughs> uh, glad to be here. Glad to have you here. Glad to get some more voices of our team uh, on the cast and on the stream. Um, so yeah, this will be fun. We have uh, an interesting topic today. Uh, this is actually a great topic for kind of a uh, first time on the cast, first time on the stream, because it's sort of a getting to know folks topic. Uh, I think you can probably tell a lot about folks from their favorite decks. So today, uh, today we're going to talk about sort of uh, our pet decks and I don't know, maybe there are some uh, some insights we can glean from those, why they're special, if there's any stories around them. Uh, and then at the end, after we uh, cut from podcast land to uh, game land, we're going to play uh, a matchup between some of these decks. So it should be, should be really fun. Um, but first things first, I forgot last time, not going to forget this time. Uh, at the top of the cast, we like to... Uh, uh, recognize some of our teammates who have done done things in the past week or so. Uh, not me. I've mostly lost games. Uh, but I think we have to acknowledge uh, Quick Draw. Quick Draw for finishing second in the Time Shapers Exchange League. So that's very cool. Congratulations to Quick Draw. Uh, usually, uh, we don't, well, have, you know, we have to see the things that Not Tonight won, and she definitely crushed me in the minors uh, <laughs> matchup that we played. So hats off to her for that. We have a stream up for it too, so I'd encourage folks to check it out. And then last but not least, JDG is uh, really crushing it in KFL. so keep it up, JDG. Um, yeah, I don't know. Crusader, have you uh, had any big games in the last week or so? Uh, apart from me losing four times in a row in a Sasbound, uh, Swindle Sasbound League, uh, I haven't had any big match matches lately, so yeah. <laughs> Sad. I've lost to your entire team. <laughs> With a deck we are going to discuss today, so that's more ironic, I would say. I was enjoying seeing it on your list as a one that I recognized and uh, and that we just played recently. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Um, yeah, Sassbound's been really fun. Uh, I had a match today against uh, Andrew, uh, which was an excellent game. Uh, came down to the wire and uh, I think the we I think that there already have been two folks who have won games at 60 or below and that's kind of the um, the exit criteria for the league so this is the final round but we have still some folks who can catch up to them so both not tonight and last I checked JDG are in striking distance um, uh, having having not played quite as many matches as the other folks who have already uh, come in come in over the line so it'll be interesting to see the finish there too but anyway let's let's dive right into our topic um this should be fun so uh hopefully folks uh <laughs> aren't going to be bored by this deck i know i've i've uh raised it in a few uh few venues before um but the first sort of a uh, pet deck that i wanted to uh, show off is this one here oddly nefarious carl uh, Carl comes in at 74 sass, and uh, maybe what's what's special about Carl isn't super obvious, might fly under the radar. Uh, Soul Snatcher is a prominent rare in, in any deck it shows up in, uh, but in this case we see only, only 13 creatures, and you know, I've played Carl in a number of different formats. You know, it's a, it's a Moirai deck. Uh, for folks that are familiar with Moirai, it's a, a deck that I've often built li Moirai lineups around. And when taken for reversal, I've seen folks even discard the Soul Snatcher, um, which is pretty reasonable just looking at the stats. Um, but this deck is absolutely a Soul Snatcher combo deck. Uh, what it really wants to do is uh, drop that Soul Snatcher, have a key to dis, and uh, and blow up a gigantic board on a Logos or Shadows turn and collect all that Amber with either uh, interdimensional graft or too much to protect. So this deck, very capable of forging with its Key of Darkness. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, very often, 
uh, folks will look at the list when we kind of initially sit down and not really grok what it's trying to do. You know, uh, they'll say, oh, this is kind of a middle of the road, typical, like, code of good stuff type deck. Um, and then by the time we're both eyeing our keys two and key three, um, with the soul snatcher down, with the key to disc down, and they're kind of counting my cards and see what's left, and they'll realize that the um, that the scaling steel has not been spent yet. It kind of clicks, and there's the awkward moment where they're like, "Oh no, do I play more creatures or do I not?" And it's always always fun, but just enough just enough efficiency um, to kind of put the things together. And if there was kind of one thing that I really wish this deck had that would put it over the top would be a bad penny. And I don't know how often you get to say that, but with Triple Seeker Needle and uh, Soul Snatcher, a bad penny would be just really delicious. And not to mention the Mac the Knife. Uh, so lots of really cool stuff going on here. Very fun deck. Very fun deck. All right. <laughs> it, it really would be sweet with Bad Penny. Yeah. But, uh, I'm going to ask you something um, before we delve further. Uh, mm -hmm. What makes for a pet or signature deck? Uh, do you have any nostalgic uh, feelings toward this deck? Uh, or what made you really appreciate this one here? That's a good question. So uh, there is there is kind of a good origin story to this deck. It's not one that I uh, that I kind of had initially identified as a as a good deck or had really any potential. I kind of stumbled on it, and this is going to be maybe a theme uh, of my decks. I kind of stumbled on it in a Time Shapers SAS Cap event uh, way back when uh, we were still running weekly SAS Cap events for Time Shapers. Time Shapers. And I kind of took this one off the shelf. I thought, oh, there's some cool stuff in here. We'll see what happens. And it was just like I, I had a hand where all the combo pieces were there, and it, and it really clicked. And uh, it, it was just just really fun to kind of kind of have that moment of discovery and surprise and delight when it just it just fell together. And ever since then, it's been a deck that I'll bring out. Uh, you know, I'll bring it to competitive games. I've even thought about bringing it to some. Um, open Archon events that have happened over the past couple of years, and uh, you know, just to see to surprise, just to see if I can surprise folks, because you know, without artifact control, it really, really is an oppressive combo, or at least can be. Um, but that that sort of uh, that sort of first event where things kind of fell into place, and it was just like, holy smokes, this has been sitting in my collection, and I didn't even realize. Uh, uh, this interaction was a thing. And of course I've immediately, immediately gone and looked on DOK for other decks that match the, you know, soul snatcher, multiple key to discs, uh, scaling steel, uh, profile. And there really aren't that many out there. Um, so it's kind of unique in that way too, but I, I feel like, uh, it's a pet deck for me, one for, for that kind of, uh, discovery time that was really special. And, and also just as a deck that I feel like uh, has this really unique synergy that you don't see um, uh, much else in the game, really. And even even uh, DOK itself, you know, uh, is all over the place in its evaluation of this deck. It's sitting at 74 now. Uh, but the event that I initially brought it to was, you know, a, a high 60s SAS cap, you know, 67, 68. So it's been, been up and down. And if you look at the the score attributed to the soul snatcher you know 0.39 it's you know bordering on a, you should probably discard this it's not great type of uh valuation uh but really it's the linchpin of the deck and uh, provides tremendous value um so so kind of cool in, in that respect too it was it got sort of diamond in the rough status uh and uh and has a really cool like uh story around how i uh came to came to believe in it i guess you could say <laughs> yeah 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 that looks quite sweet with uh with all all the other stuff surrounding it yeah some just enough disruption and uh efficiency to uh you know stall or get you to the point where the combo can hit the miasma of course can you know help you double down on the too much to protect or the graft dodger and um and nerve blast even has a key cheat even has a key cheat yeah and 
I have I have made many keys with this key to darkness. You know, key to darkness is one of those ones that you laugh at, and you know when does this ever happen? But I've forged lots of key tw- key threes for twelve amber. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine even you know grafting your opponent and they are sitting at zero. Uh, so perhaps you could steal the rest and then forge at plus two is, instead of twelve. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know whether it happens, but uh, I can see it happening. Yeah. Especially with dimension. Uh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. L- looks good here. I, I mean, it's <laughs> a very good, well-rounded deck. It has a re- reasonable uh, uh, expected ember. Has uh, ember control, creature control, uh, uh, artifact control. Uh, it ha- got some arch- archiving, board wipes, scaling, ember control. I mean, it well, when you look at it, uh, it doesn't lack anything. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. It, it doesn't, it, it it's it doesn't have any particular flaw to exploit. Yeah, good point. It's kind of got this well-rounded quality. Um, not not overwhelming, but well-rounded for sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, that that is Carl. Uh, so let's let's switch on over. Uh, I've got a couple for you here too. What one would you like to talk about first? I don't know. You can pick one. I'm All right. Going to adapt. <laughs> How about uh, Naysayer Baku? Yes. Let's move on to this one. So that's Naysayer Baku. I mean, uh, it, it's it's my pet deck. Uh, because uh, I, I mean, uh, when I started playing Keyforge, it it was like I'm really emotionally attached to this deck because it was one of the first one I pulled out. Uh, it's an English deck uh, because I've imported it, it from Czech Republic. I mean, I've imported uh, sealed box, uh, sealed uh, boosters of AOA, and I've stumbled upon this one uh the first thing that really catches my eyes triple mimicry and i was like whoa this this is gonna be awesome and it was i immediately jumped onto uh, playing this deck at tco uh, and uh it has it was performing surprising uh, surprisingly well for a deck with almost no ember control in it uh, I mean, uh, uh, now nowadays I uh, play it, play it in Saskap leagues. Uh, it has won Everett Joe's League nine uh, with uh, a perfect score uh, for all. Uh, it has won several, no, a single chain bound chain bound events. It's uh, it's good for adaptive, of, uh, in my opinion. So I I used to play on casual at first, then I switched to competitive archon. But it's yeah, it's a sixty forces deck. It's not gonna perform well against those eighty plus eighty five plus mass mutation decks. Uh, so. I have started playing uh, fast adaptive mm-hmm. uh, on a competitive option, and uh, for sure it's not as easy to evaluate, uh, and I often lose because of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but this one is a really the one that I have played the most games with which makes it special for me. Uh, I remember uh, at my local chain mode event, I've... this deck is, you know, the, 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 game, the game plan of the, this deck is to really play with your opponent's stuff. Like it has color, it has triple mimicry with uh, a lot of recursion, like glimmers and regrowth. Uh, I've... Uh, 
I, I remember a fu funny story when I used to. Uh, I, I've literally locked my opponent out of the game because they've discarded the Spirit's Way on their first turn. <laughs> and I've been playing the, the Spirit's Way every consecutive, uh, consecutive turn. Uh, and they couldn't really make anything. <laughs> the deck was creature based, yeah. So that was fun. Uh, but I, I, I think I've, mm, I, I should get back into the topic of this deck, of, of this particular deck, because I haven't really said anything about it. Uh, so when we look at it, uh, it doesn't have uh, much Ember control, as I've said. Apart Ma Martin's Ember. Uh, and uh, uh, one single shoulder that's not much and with nine printed it's not gonna burst up in ember uh, quite fast mm -hmm. but what people tend to miss while looking at the stats is that the 11 other stat like it's mm -hmm. uh, because of triple mimicry and uh, the color of subordination, I uh, can really steal the game plan from my opponents. Uh, let's say they are playing Virtuous Works. Cool, I can play Virtuous Works five times in the course of a single uh, shuffle. So nice free Ember, I've got 15. They, if they, if they mm, have scaling Ember control, I can use the, it to their disadvantage. Uh, the deck cycles really fast with mm, a pair of old yorks. Mm -hmm. uh, it does have some uh, amber punishing uh, stuff. Like uh, I'm speaking uh, about tentacles. If I set it underneath uh, a taunt creature, uh, I can really prevent my opponent from using their artifacts so much. Uh, it does have quite pretty nice uh, creature control. Uh, a knock gateway is a is a hard one. It's a hard uh, board wipe. So uh, any creature based uh, uh, deck must face it at some point. And I the sh shout out to uh, destroy them all. I think it's a. <laughs> MVP of artifact removal card, I suppose, because it's one of the countless cards that also destroys upgrades, which with uh, in this deck uh, can be a little bit problematic to deal with. So, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think I could really show more while playing this deck. It has some cool interactions we could probably show on the stream. Sure. And I, I definitely have to agree. The, the mimicries, you know, uh, it, really, the, the, it really undersells the, um, the amber control count because, you know, uh, it's, it's amber control if you need it. Uh, it's disruption if you need it. They, they really just do so much to prop up where there might be a lacking stat. You know, I've, I've seen triple mimicry decks, double mimicry decks, uh, do Jenka things to Jenka decks, and that's really funny. Or uh, you know, yes. you say nice control of the week. Thank you for your for the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed. Cool, cool. Well, maybe we'll play this one. It's an option. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to my next one here. Uh, uh, Subtly riveted Zoltan. This is a fun one, and uh, uh, there's some similarities uh, to Baku, so I'm not gonna dwell too much on those. Uh, but I want to highlight uh, one thing. And, and then note that, you know, maybe we have similar tastes in these low uh, Amber control decks, or we've just been hanging out with a, a certain teammate too much. I don't know. Very possible. But, um, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, the real cool thing about this deck, uh, and I guess maybe the, the origin story, I, uh, I uh, opened it with my brother and, uh, kind of played it on a whim and it ended up doing very well uh, against some of his kind of Archon, Archon candidate decks, and surprisingly so. Um, but the, the real kicker here is the, uh, the snags in combination with Universal Translator, the Medic Ingrams, 
and the stunners. Uh, so uh, it is not too difficult to set up a situation where you have a medic Ingram wearing universal translator with a snag on board, and all of a sudden you have warded snags or, uh, or warding the things that snag fights and can lock an opponent out very easily. The stunners also do a lot of work with unnatural selection. Uh, having to keep to three creatures is one thing, but having to keep to three creatures when some or all of them are stunned is another thing. Um, so very fun deck, very dynamic. And I think that's kind of a, a thing that I gravitate towards on decks that I enjoy. You know, lots of dynamic cards that, that have lots of different utilities. Um, so yeah, this one's a lot of fun. Uh, who knows, maybe it'll be the one that we play in the game, but uh, folks will see me playing it in the competitive queue uh, from time to time. I did try very, very briefly to make this work in adaptive um, and found out very quickly that it can work, but the high upgrade count uh, makes for very awkward hands at low chains at times. So uh, it's, it's an interesting adaptive deck in that uh, and that uh, it's, it is highly dynamic. It does uh, require some familiarity to pilot well, I believe. Um, but when chained, when it's the one taking chains, uh, can get a little bit swingy, can get a little bit swingy, uh, especially without tons of speed. You kind of are relying on recursion for speed. Um, but yeah, this one's very cool. Very cool. All right. I'm going to switch over to your other, unless you have uh, any questions for me on Zoltan. Um, I do not. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, perhaps how well does your Fact of Cavern perform in this one, <laughs> particularly? Yeah. So this is, uh, this is interesting. Interesting card in the deck because it's not. It's not always a play, and it's not always a discard. Um, uh, the deck very often does want to build up, build up a big Voltron. So you might have a. A very large creature wearing multiple stunners. You know, maybe you've got an Ingram with multiple stunners, a Universal Translator, and uh, and the Light of the Archons. So it's it's not it's not going to really not really going anywhere. Um, it's going to be the largest creature on board. If they play multiple creatures, you're going to stun them and then let the Fangtooth Cavern connect, collect them. And uh, if they decide to just you know leave an empty board and uh, try to send. Uh, your Voltron into the cavern. Uh, either either the cavern just eats a eats a ward token, a ward counter, or you you know you throw out some other kind of tribute monster for it to devour. Um, but uh, there are definitely games where it's a discard. I'd say more often than not, I end up playing it. Um, but can be a discard. Your creatures are not not huge, um, so really really depends on the matchup. Really depends the matchup. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. And quick hello to some of the folks in the chat. Hey, quick draw. Hey, Zoc. Hey, Fudgenator. Hello. Murph, how's it going? Glad to have you here. Oh, and more of us too. Hey, more of us. All right, sweet. So that's Zoltan. Zoltan's a lot of fun. Very subtle indeed. Um, and then I'm going to switch over to uh, Acute Armored. Uh, maybe I'll let you pronounce it, but I'd say. Uh, yeah, I'll, how would you pronounce this name, this deck? I, I, I mean, uh, I really call it Diana. Diana. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I do not want to delve uh, more into <laughs> Di Diana, Diana. I, I just call it Diana, so that's that, that works for me. Uh, yes, so. Uh, uh, as you switch over it uh, over to it uh, mm -hmm. this deck is mine uh, I, I used to pull it out of uh, a quota box I used to order like I, I was binge opening uh, a single display and I, I this was the first deck that I pulled out of it out of it scanned it and then looked at the stats and was like wow uh, what 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 is what we see here is thirty seven uh, expected amber. It used to be thirty eight. Um, it's quite a lot, even uh, even nowadays, uh, paired with quite a lot of steel. Well, a bit of steel mm -hmm. uh, from urchins and routine jobs with a scaling ember control uh, 
being doorstep to heaven. That's quite an explosive combination, but uh, this deck hinders when it comes to decks with huge wide boards and uh, problematic artifacts, which are game changing. Uh, for example, uh, let's say pet hologramophones, uh, golden spirals. I do not have any answers for them, so this deck really wants to end the game quickly and if it doesn't succeed i lose the game <laughs> it's a really coin flippy deck very draw dependent but in a competitive arcan queue i uh, i've managed to 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 beat decks that are uh, stronger uh, in terms of sus uh, I've played this one in SAS leagues in uh, Moirais or in tri tri triads where uh, it usually serves as a ban bait, but if it's not banned, <laughs> it uh, can finish the game quickly. Um, but uh, yeah. I think uh, the, the, there's, there are some ca cards I will highlight really quickly, which is Glorious Few. Uh, in a 12 creature deck, this generates very uh, large amounts of Amber. Uh, so it the, the, the game can turn uh, 180 degrees on my favor. The same goes for uh, Cleansing Wave uh, paired with Common Cold which is also a combo I quite often like to pull off. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that's all I can say for it now. So you, you may or may not know this, but I, I actually, uh, long before we were, we were teammates, I played this deck in a uh, SAS cap event that was, uh, what was it? It was a um, uh, KF, PL qualifier called Forging with Friends, a 75 SAS cap where two players both play, both brought a deck and then you actually oh, yeah. counted, counted keys. Yes. Um, oh, so. I remember it. So yeah. it was like one person has to uh, place Archon and one person plays Reversal or it was oh, uh, This one was both Archon. So both Archon oh, okay. and you just, yeah. Trying I to... mean, if you click the attached image, uh, you can see that uh, I, I think I've th there is a photo. Oh, of, there you uh, go. You. Yeah, indeed. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yes. So, it was quite some time ago. It was over a year ago. Over a year. Well, yeah. Yeah, very fun. I was checking TCO before this and noticed that I had about twenty games uh, with this deck. So very cool. It's a great deck. Yeah, Absolutely this, great deck. This deck is like second most played by me up to this day. Yes. Very cool. So shall we move to the last one? Sure. So last one, uh, <laughs> this is a funny one and I almost I almost sheepishly toss it out here as a um as a pet deck of mine. Uh, I get uh, <laughs> lots of uh, no. lots of flack from my righteous <laughs> teammates who uh who who taunt me for playing bad decks but um another deck that i discovered in time shapers sas cap events so i think at the time this was at 62 it was a 62 or 63 capped event um and i just looked at it and i said you know that that can't be right given the efficiency and i think kind of this was at a time when i was really really loving mm, lower powered aoa decks that that kind of uh that kind of drew lots of consistency through efficiency and was really kind of interested in the idea of, well, how, how much can I overcome, you know, low C or low Amber control if I'm just very efficient. And, and this deck was kind of one that I brought out, uh, while, while kind of exploring that space. And, uh, I, I remember the event very clearly. I was playing against Arlie who, uh, who actually, interestingly enough, um, hailed, uh, the same, uh, LGS as me at the time and um, and got down to a point where I had both wild wormholes in hand and if I passed the turn I would lose but my deck of uh, 11 or 12 cards had Choda in it and I had enough 
amber to uh, amber to forge with Choda if I if I for flipped it for my third key, and the first wormhole um, flipped over a bad penny, and uh, you know there was lots of joking about gambling, and then uh, the second one of course flipped over the Choda, and uh, and that was the deciding moment for the event, and it was uh, it was kind of a really fun moment. So ever since then, I, I bring this deck out. It's my go-to Newton deck. Um, I find that it has some uh, holes. Yes, obviously, obviously many holes, but but the principal holes of the deck are ones that might not be terribly obvious just by looking at the stats. Um, and I'm, I'm I don't know, a little behind the scenes here, but I'm considering this deck very strongly for the next Swindle event. So we'll see. Could be fun, but it's it's a lot of fun. Kind of AOA efficient, good stuff. <laughs> no uh, no board control. Uh, I would say undervalued amber control. You're getting you're getting steals with that brand, and you're probably getting multiple steals with that brand with all the recursion in the deck here. Um, so yeah, really cool deck. Um, but those are mine, and we've got yours. We are going to uh, transition now uh, over to playing a game. And I guess side note for folks in the chat, uh, we are looking for a kind of a good sign off to kind of transition us from uh, from discussion mode to uh, to games mode. So if you have any ideas, our best our best thought right now is to just kind of cut randomly mid sentence and uh, hope nobody notices. Um, but <laughs> if you have ideas, send it over. Um, but Crusader, this, since this is your first time here uh, on the stream, on the chat, um, I'm going to give you the honor of deciding which decks that we play, uh, which decks we play for oh, our game. That's, that, that's hard. I mean, I, I, I can, well, I will choose my side, but I do not want to choose for you because they are your decks. <laughs> like, uh, I'm going to say uh let's play uh, diana first okay against one of yours but uh, it's totally up to you i do not know what power level they are so i i might say denizag might be a little outclassed against uh against diana but um zoltan or carl could have interesting games mm. Let's try Carl. That'll be fun. Well, I, I feel I feel like you know this know, know my deck uh, in and out. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm get I'm gonna get beaten. Up. Yeah, you uh, you just told me that your deck doesn't like artifacts and uh, scaling Ember control and all these things. So I, right. picked, I picked the one with all that stuff. <laughs> no, I shouldn't no. have said that. I shouldn't have said that. All right, so I'll give uh, I'll give Zoltan a try. That'll be fun. That might be a. Uh... Shall I create a game? Yeah, you please do. do okay. Uh, I'm Ooh. gonna uh, make show hands. Uh, copy game link. Uh, could you upload it on stream? The password is. Uh, stream stream okay anybody who wants yep. to spectate and see open hands uh password is stream i will see if i can grab the game link here okay anybody who uh wants to join feel free and i'll give zoltan a try that could be Make for a nice sharp game. Uh, Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Ah, let the game begin. Let it begin, indeed. Good luck. Have fun. Good luck. Have fun. And now the age-old question of where the heck to put the. Yeah, try it right there. Okay. I'm going to reread your uh, deck list real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I do not, I am not going to memorize it at all. So I might as well ju just pass it right here. All mm. right. So what do we have here? Uh, 
I'm going to keep it. Interesting. I'm going to keep it as well. I think uh, I might go uh, this oh. in like two turns, and we'll see what happens. I see. Yeah, give me uh, some creatures. So I'm going to play some beef. Beef here. Double Taunt, Immortal, Azardus 2, uh, Anathiel. And I'm going to actually play Doorstep. I feel like if I'm having four carded opener mm -hmm. and I draw uh, Doorstep this early in the game, there is no point of holding it, especially because. I'm trying to outrace you. <laughs> My mimicry is happy to see it in the. Uh... You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Now, I'm question. glad your deck doesn't have any infernuses. <laughs> <laughs> that, right. that that would be troublesome. Let's do this guy. Click all the things with unnatural selection. Yes. Okay. All right. That, that that one might be a little bit problematic for me. I'm gonna play shadows and uh, make it so you cannot really uh, attack my earth in here. Oh, okay. And steals. Wow. What a meanie. Suddenly, not enough for check. Yes, I mean. <laughs> Lean and mean. Interesting. Maybe you want to steal some more. That could be okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's put this guy next to the snag. Feels like a good spot to be saving some. Uh... I see. Mm -hmm. So now I have a choice. Hmm. <clears throat> so. Well. You have some really juicy options for my snag to fight. I just get through that and I feel. Yes, this is, th that's the point. You gotta get through it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna call shadows once again. And that's quite generous from you. Mm -hmm. I I was, you know, uh, trying to see which one I could make a better use of. Yeah. But in the end, I feel like I do not want you to forge at five instead of me <clears throat> stealing. Okay, so what did you do here? Evil Eye. Older guys to snack. Do you have any? Uh, this is Zoltan. No, you don't have any scaling. You don't have any. You, you have very little ember control here. And so, so you are just trying to outrace me. That's that's interesting. To see. Um. I do have a whole lot of pips. Not as many as you, but 18 is pretty good. Not your 23. Not your 23. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it again. I, I mean, if you are so generous to me, I cannot just walk past it. Yeah, understandable. Understandable. Well, I guess I have to cash in on this now. Ouch. <laughs> All right, you, 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 oh no, oh god, I forgot that I have discarded that stuff. Oh Jesus, oh mm -hmm. Jesus, I just got bamboozled by my own. <laughs> uh, quite unfortunate. Okay, I'm gonna desperately try to secure my position here. Okay, oh, you do not have a second copy of an oh no, you do, you do have two times on natural selection, but am I really afraid of it? Hmm. I don't know. 
for sure I'm gonna take you hostage. Okay. Uh, fight with the snag. That makes me sad. Dancing way for one. Uh, this kind of board. I had big I plans for that snag. Big plans. I had really big plans for that snag, you know? I, I don't think you should say anything more. I mean, uh, I've just lost seven ember to my own doorstep because of mimicry. <laughs> I really forget that how, how strong this, how stupidly strong this card is. It's very oh. good. Some so that's a chunky, uh, that's some chunky Molina here. No, Molina, Ingram. Okay. Mm. What do I do about it? Ah, you just leave it. It's fine. Don't worry. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. Hey, glad to see the red keys getting forged first. Very good. Good form. Good form. Thank you. Okay. Um, first things first. Heal. Heal that. Play that. Mm -hmm. Not very nice. I mean, she's gonna stand there no matter what for the rest of the game, so I might as well just get rid of the rest of her team here. Pick Sensible. up my urchin back. Uh, play a nipple here. Play uh, vigor, and pass the turn back to you. Mm, so generous, and I get a key. I like keys. Oh, my universal mm. translator is <laughs> not very impressive. Quite useless right now. Not gonna lie. All right, so let's throw I'm Molina still back. salty. I mean, <laughs> I'm still quite salty about that. As you should be. As you should be, you know? Yes. That was not very smart of me. All right, let's... Okay, I see Molina in the center. Okay, stun. And ward. Okay. Sun is raining for one. Hmm. That's not something I like to see now. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna call shadows. I'm gonna play Fagan. Uh, steal one. Reap for one. Uh, remove ward, I suppose. What does what could I do here? Sensible. I'm not really sure. Hmm. Hmm. Now, do I want to leave Faget online? That's a good question. Not really. Okay, we're just gonna keep keep racing, keep racing, see what happens. Okay, Kirby. Oh no, there is more. Let's oh give no. You some chains. Chains are good. Chains are great. Ouch. Chains are great. Reap. Yeah, keep reaping. Everybody's reaping. No, no. And we'll Don't spin do it. Fagin. Heal this oh, one. Oh, right. You have stunner. Mm hmm. Ouch. Mm hmm. That's unfortunate. For you. <laughs> so I'm not going to take you off check, I suppose. So if I'm not going to do that i might as well just go forward um so you're going to you, you have four amber on, on board currently well that that, that stunner quite sucks <laughs> i mean i can't really do much about it I can't even take hostage you, but I'm going to 
play the most cards of my uh, hand and see what what can I get there. Very sensible. That ape is quite a beef now. Ooh, um, a blue key. Okay. Hmm. I I will admit too that I'm very very happy to see that glorious few go by. That makes me happy. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> that was my primary amber option, but you are really refusing to play anything else apart from those pesky mm. Star Alliance cards. Yeah. Well, let's see what you have now. Unfortunately, don't have much option in Star Alliance right now, I suppose. I can't get Unless to check. Really not quite. Not yes. quite check. But we're going to see if we can find the stealth mode for the next turn. Um, let's save these three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's we'll save so these three. <laughs> um, of course, you had to draw a natural selection. Naturally, naturally. Naturally. Hmm. You're going to go, you're going to probably go sh untamed. What do you need? What do you have? Ten cards left to still need to see the yeah i feel like some untamed is in my future let's smash this niffle ape no thanks you can keep the urchin yep put that one over there Keep going on the left. Okay. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. Uh, aha, I, I've got chains. I just realized that I have five cards in my hand instead of six. Mm -hmm. uh, that's hurts quite a bit. Let's see. I, I, I'm going to play Untamed. I wish I could go to check here, but sadly I cannot. So that's quite sad. If I hey if I had this ape on the board, that could be I, I could pressure you more here. Mm -hmm. Uh but I'm going to play quite an MVP of this deck against capture base deck. <laughs> uh worth of returning. Very nice. So all my amber is back in my stash. Uh Yes. Let's see Oof. what you've got here. Wow. Okay, well. Mm, we have the next routine job coming, huh? And still one more urchin. Well, if, you, if, if you can prevent me from doing that, uh, <laughs> that's, that, that would change the game. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. But I assume that you do not have stealth mode in hand because you are saying stuff like that. Yeah, did not draw it here. So let's see what I have for options. Hmm. And I think I just have to hope you haven't drawn the miasma yet and go for a big burst. Let's keep your shadows locked down. Or do I draw? No, have to go to check. You have to. Have to. More stuns. Stuns for everybody. everybody. Remember that if I didn't lose my seven number back then, it <laughs> could have been over. Indeed. Uh, I, 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 I'm really salty that I have a deck with triple mimicry and I <laughs> forgot stuff like that. That's quite, quite awkward. Camouflage. All right. Uh-huh. So nine is interesting. I think it gets me out of range of your steel, and we just have to hope you don't have the miasma. Might be hoping for a lot, but we'll see. Stun the urchin, because you're going shadows. Yes, that, that's true. And... I quite hoped that you 
didn't do that. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'm not conceding yet, so that really means one thing. So my Yarma mm -hmm. is online. Uh, I really wish I, I, I've drawn something else, but I'm going seven. So what's, what do you have here? I suppose you have, you have played Xeno training. You have played, uh, your, uh, mimicry. Evil eye is already in this card, I suppose. Yes. So, well, is it over then? Wait, do you have any key charge here? <laughs> because I don't remember. No, you don't have any key sheets. And you cannot rip twice with Ishi. I mean, you could drop Ishi rip once, but that's all you you've got, I suppose. I'm just gonna feel good about my high amber total, you know. <laughs> yeah that's it that'll do it well played well played good game Woo. okay thought, thanks thought maybe i would sneak sneak in a win there yeah i was hoping to draw the ishi earlier uh and start capturing but you still had this word of returning looming um that was going to cause me problems um but you know the the evil eye and the mimicry kind of lined up very well at the beginning for me. Um, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I totally forgot about those. I, I mean, yeah, I, I've seen evil eye and I said, okay, I do not forge at nine, which would be kind of bad for me. Mm -hmm. So I just went uh, like, like my brain weight uh, went ape mode. <laughs> and I started to burst uh, amber like crazy, uh, and I've I think I've learned my lesson for now. <laughs> uh, but I I was holding to that miasma for uh, I don't know a second turn right right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think I've drawn it uh, two turns before, so that was quite lucky for me. But I I do have like only three cards left in my deck. So there wasn't mm, much of a chance that I didn't get it. Yeah. So here my asthma aligned good for me. But you, if you if if you if you have drawn your stealth mode turn before that it would have been over, because I do not have any way to stop you at nine, I suppose, assuming that Darcep is already gone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so what now what now that's it that's, that's it that's yeah it. that's it you're the champion first time here and you won I, I i should have told you before we started that it's customary to uh let me win on the the first one you know but you know you didn't let me know i you should have, have you, sh you should have done it <laughs> uh I, I mean, I, I suppose we are playing the second one too, right? So, or, or, oh, um, we we can play, but I think we'll 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 sign off here. Let every every flight folks go on. Thanks, oh, y'all. That, that's a shame. All yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, then keep your secrets. Indeed. See you. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, thanks everybody for uh, hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we will see you around the lab. See ya.